So Linux is something I never really understood because for me, it was just a tool that I used for web servers to deploy different apps to use on AWS and so forth. But it's always had a cult following that was very interesting to me because I never really took the time to get into it. And trust me, you do need time. So in this video, I spent the time to go all the way down the Linux rabbit hole and become a Linux extremist so you don't have to. I watched all the Linux YouTube channels, I bought the hardware, installed the hardest distribution, and spent a unreasonable amount of time customizing my desktop environment. Now I'm taking a massive risk in making this video because I understand a lot of people clicking on Linux videos are gonna really like Linux, and not everything I say is gonna be positive. But rather than play it safe, I'm gonna be a bit polarizing here to start a discussion, so let me know what I'm wrong about or what you don't agree about. And if you don't know the first thing about Linux, you can treat this more like a history channel or nature documentary. Just sit back and enjoy. So the way this video is gonna go, I'm gonna give a little bit of Linux context, like really fast, just for the people who don't really know too much about it. Then we'll get into the spectrum of Linux ideologies with real world examples, other YouTube channels that you probably know, everything from your Linux haters to your NPCs completely unaware of what Linux even is, all the way to the deepest corners of Reddit and desktop customization. And then finally, I'm gonna get into my experience and whether I think there is actually some value in being a Linux enthusiast, what are the pros, what are the cons, and where I personally fall on the spectrum. Now you can't understand Linux without knowing the top G. Not Andrew Tate, but Linus Torvalds, Finnish god of Linux who coded the Linux kernel himself. Now, keeping this as short as possible, the kernel is the core of the OS, and it doesn't work without the rest of the distribution, which is kind of like the other half of the code for your operating system. Now, there's two main distro families, Arch-based and Debian-based. And those families expand into a tree of all the different distributions that you would actually install on your computer. Now, these different distributions, they have different use cases. Some of them have a utilitarian use case, like if you're trying to do some hacking, you'd use Kali Linux. If you want a reliable, stable distribution to run a database, you'd use Ubuntu. So if you're thinking, wow, this is already pretty complicated, let's just say there is a lot of stuff to memorize. To first install your operating system, then there's the package management. Unlike clicking a nice little install button in a browser, installing most programs happens on the command line in Linux. So even if you don't code, you can feel like a hacker. Now you've installed all the packages you want. The next step is configuration. Basically, you're gonna be reading a lot of documentation to customize your packages that you install. And unlike Mac OS or Windows, you can pretty much completely customize everything. And many say this makes you more productive, but does it actually? Well, we'll find out. Okay, let's explain all the ideologies. Returning to the spectrum and start with level one. Level one is the NPCs. They're unaware. They might or might not know even what the Linux Penguin is, and they've never even considered running Linux. Basically, this group just uses their operating system as a bootloader for Google Chrome anyway. They literally only use the browser. But the thing is, don't call these people normies or NPCs because chances are they're more normal than you, more normal than us, to be fair. That brings us to level two. We can call these the haters. These are people who have used Linux in the past and they either got extremely frustrated with it or simply see no benefits at all to using it. In fact, they might have a YouTube channel that actually makes critical videos on Linux. Possibly put Linus Tech Tips in this category as well as Tech Lead. Let's start with Linus. He did a Linux challenge where he fully switched over for a month and he basically tried to use Linux for gaming, which turned out to be an extremely frustrating experience for him because he started with the wrong distribution, had a lot of problems installing drivers, and then the compatibility for the games he was trying to run was extremely low. He also had a lot of critiques about Linux not being user-friendly at all. And then a lot of Linux YouTubers reacted to him saying he just didn't know what was up and it's so obvious you wouldn't use Linux for that, which to some extent actually validated Linus's point that Linux was not accessible or very welcoming to beginners. Now, TechLead also made a very critical video on Linux saying it's only free if you don't value your time. A pretty strong statement. He had some decent points and then some others that were not so strong. Namely that he said that in reality you're either going to be dual booting or having multiple machines if you are running Linux because 
Number one, you basically just can't play games on Linux. So if that's you, you have to have Windows too. And then number two, if you ever use any Adobe software like Photoshop, then you have to have either Windows or Mac. And if you do run two operating systems, then you basically have to have two different file systems. You have to keep everything in sync. And that is a pain for sure. But TechLead's analysis of why people use Linux was not so strong. He said he thought it was just because people are cheap and they don't wanna pay for an operating system. But I don't really think that sums up the average Linux enthusiast, which we will dive into. Let's next explore level three, which is the worker. These people know Linux and they use it regularly, but they don't have an emotional attachment to it. In fact, asking them whether they like it would probably be a strange question as using it isn't even really a choice. You'd put people like network engineers, system administrators, and DevOps people in this category. And in fact, there's huge YouTube channels like Network Chuck that really push Kali Linux for its practical uses, specifically in ethical hacking. There's not much more to say about this level. It's a level four though that things change because here we're in soft core enthusiast territory. You can find a lot of soft core videos on Linux. For example, this Why Linux is Better video by Kala Halden, who has some great aesthetic coding videos. So check him out if you're interested. I say soft core enthusiast because these people like Linux, but they're probably not using Arch or one of the more hardcore distributions. And that's about it. That changes though at level six. If you're at this level, you almost certainly use Arch or have done some distribution hopping. That means installing multiple Linux operating systems kind of just for fun. At this level, you definitely have a goatee, possibly also a shaved head. You probably are a libertarian and bought land and you're waiting for Starlink to come to your area so you can get completely off the grid. If someone asks you why you like it, you would probably give reasons like it's not controlled by any corporation, which brings us to the deepest level because the distro you installed doesn't have a desktop environment, but then you install one and there's light. You see this picture, how does it make you feel? If it makes you feel excited, then I'm sorry to say you might belong down here. That is browsing r slash Unix porn. And now using Arch means nothing. It's the default, it's obvious, but rather you're competing based on more obscure and difficult window management programs, how long and extensive your dot files or configuration are. You've probably memorized all the commands to do a fresh Arch install, and you may or may not spend hours trying to take the perfect screenshot to impress people on Reddit. And this is the level I went to. So let's talk about my Linux experience. So the first thing I did was I watched all the Linux channels, combed through the Arch and Unix porn subreddits and learned that I needed some hardware to be a true Arch user. The best being the Lenovo ThinkPad Carbon Gen 6, which you're supposed to buy used. Now this is not a laptop review, but the ThinkPad is a it's a nice machine. I got Arch Linux installed without too much trouble, but had to start over one time because I made the mistake of following a video tutorial on YouTube. And you're supposed to just use the official Arch documentation. People take a lot of pride in installing Arch, but honestly, you're just copy and pasting a lot of commands. So there's no real benefit, but there's a major downside because if you mess up one command, you might just have to start over. When I got things up and running, customizing was kind of interesting and cool, the first time at least. It was very time consuming taking around two to three days to first learn what all the programs were because you need a program for everything including even changing your desktop picture and I decided I was going to use a stack of i3 gaps window manager because it doesn't come with a desktop environment so you just have a command line until you install that and i3 gaps looks pretty cool if you check out pictures of it. Now I was up and ready to go and everything felt pretty similar to Mac if I'm being honest because they're both Unix based operating systems so all the commands in the terminal work the same. But I felt like for this to be fair, I should have bought a new ThinkPad because the screen was just so much worse that I literally started to get a headache once I started coding. So I didn't really have any problems until I took a trip to London. For some reason on my new hotel Wi-Fi, the NPM program, it just was not working. I found the issue on GitHub and it turns out that NPM just doesn't work on Arch on certain Wi-Fis and it's just straight up unfixed. It's an open issue. So for that whole time I was staying in the hotel, I had to go to Starbucks every time I wanted to install a new NPM package. It felt like I was living in the USSR. I had to adopt a fatalist mindset, wait in line to install my packages, and then go home. And there was one other issue I had, which is every few days, my screen started flashing when I was typing and there was no error messages, so I didn't know how to fix it. But restarting my computer fixed the issue. There was also a few times I had to edit videos and go on Photoshop, so I did have to switch back to my Mac. Now, after over a month of having this setup, my conclusion is this. Linux is kind of fun to try out due to the novelty. That is for a certain type of person who likes 
intrinsically challenging things. But once I actually started using it, I didn't find any of the customization to make me more productive. But then there were these two major issues that were outside of my control, which were just speed bumps in the things I was actually trying to get done, which is code this app. Now I'm all for the Linux philosophy of freedom and I love open source, but something like the operating system that's lower in the stack, reliability is a huge thing. And even if it's not reliable, you know, 1% of the time, that's kind of a problem. So it pains me to say this, but I would say in the end, I'm closest probably to tech lead on the spectrum, which sucks because there's so much I like about the idea of it, just like Bitcoin. Ideologically, you have free democratic money, you have a free open operating system, but the reality is they're both risky investments. Could you theoretically be more productive with Linux? Yes. But the reality is at any time there can be a new arch issue without a fix. And while your desktop environment is beautiful and got 85 upvotes, one change to your config could create a bug it takes you an entire afternoon to fix. So in the end, unfortunately, I won't be sticking with Linux. But that being said, would I do it again? Absolutely yes. I think if you're a specific type of person, the Linux experience can be quite enjoyable. Using a different distro, it could even be reliable. But I think it's important to stay pragmatic and use Linux in moderation because the benefits when you start getting too deep are purely philosophical. I think you should really analyze the reason why you need to use Arch or that obscure window manager and ask whether it's really helping you achieve your goals. It was very interesting becoming a Linux enthusiast for a short period of time, but I'm going back to my Mac.